How's it going, everyone? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to Highway Blossoms. The last episode was a emotional roller coaster of sorts for our two main characters. If anything, they are now closer to each other than ever before. I won't go into details. Maybe you guys can get what I'm hinting at. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then please watch the last episode. And, uh... Yeah, it's been a while since I recorded this. I am really bad at recording this. So let's uh, let's just get back to trying to power through this, shall we? I drag myself to the driver's seat and slam my cup in the holder, then plant my head on the steering wheel. It honks. The handles from the bathroom squeak and the sound of water is reduced to a drip. A few moments later, Marina trots down the motorhome and hops into her seat. I jerk up my head. All set? Yep. But... Are you sure nothing's wrong? Forcing a smile, I turn the key and put the RV into drive. Don't worry. Everything's fine. Just a little tired. Yeah, I don't believe that shit. Marina studies me for a few seconds, then shrugs and looks out the window, happily staring at the giant thermometer outside. I pick up Gramps' favorite tape and put it in the player, still staring at Marina. Frowning, I catch a glimpse of myself in the rearview mirror. Please don't hurt her, please. Why would we? Oh, and it says here that there are giant dinosaur statues just up ahead. Oh, that's great. Everything she's been saying for the past few hours has been zooming right past me. It's not that I don't understand it. I've read that guidebook she's been pointing to about a thousand times as a kid, but it's all being drowned out by the music and my constant thinking. The drive hasn't done much to soothe the budding anxiety inside me. In fact, I'd say it's just made it worse. After four states worth of desert and endless stretches of road, it's maddening to see it all get mauled over by overpasses and the slowest, most painful and rage-inducing traffic I've ever seen. With nothing but Gramps' tape to keep me grounded, it's been, a ba it's been a battle to not go mental, excuse me there. My mind keeps wandering back to Marina, how we're together, what exactly that means, her trust, my responsibility. And the more I think about it, the more I... Amber, look at how white the sand is! It's just like snow! Her observations hadn't been helping either. Whenever I'm about to make a breakthrough or convince myself I'm just thinking too hard, she pipes in, and suddenly I feel like I'm right back to where I started in Colorado. At least I can take solace in the scenery going back to something more familiar as we get closer to Palm Springs. Like Marina said, the sand is a lot wider, and looks almost as soft as cotton. It fades into fields of rocks and dry plants, trailing into expansive mountain ranges. All this, just off the side of the road. It feels like the kind of desert people wander around and go crazy in. Something I can very much sympathize with. After all, wandering around in a, in a desert and going crazy is how I met Marina. I think that's where the seeds of trust and responsibility were sown. At least, I like to think that's why she trusts me, because I helped her. And it's through the next few weeks that the trust was built upon, cultivating in something maybe even greater than that. Marina became important to me, someone I had to protect. Whoa, look at all the windmills! I clenched down on the steering wheel. By doing what we did last night, did I betray the sense of greater than trust? She saw me crying, she comforted me, I made a move, and... Oh god. The realization is like a punch to the gut. I want to swerve off to the side of the road and hurl my guts out. I used her. I used Marina. Amber, look! She tugs on my sleeve and points out the window. As far as I can see into the hazy distance, an army of windmills line the sand and stretch all the way to the hilltops. Their wings spin down in unison, cycling with the steady wind. 
It's enough to snap me out of it, at least for a few seconds. But once the initial novelty wears off, I'm right back to where I've been for hours. I've never seen so many. Marina sounds completely blown away, enchanted even. It's cute, but I need to think this through. Really, this is, or think, really think this through, sorry. Hey, uh, do you think we could actually be quiet for a little while? Oh, sure, that's fine. Thanks. She goes back to looking out the window, swaying to the music. So pure, innocent. And I took advantage of that. Is that all I've been doing this entire time? Using her to make myself feel better? I don't even want to consider it, but it adds up. I was lonely, didn't have anyone else, saw a cute girl, picked her up, and consistently used her to curb that, all while telling myself that I was helping and protecting her. And then I convinced myself of more, hoping to forget about the most important person in the world to me. The tape clicks to a stop, jolting me back to reality. I eject it and flip it around, fumbling with the tape as I shove it back into the player and press play. It starts off the same as always, the same static, the same first note, everything. But soon the audio starts to slip, like someone is sliding on the tape. The music jarbles into something distorted and ugly, speeding up, slowing down, and going backwards all at once. I frantically push the eject button over and over, but it's too late. The deck spits out the tape, a string of tattered ribbon tangled around it. Ah, hate it when that shit happens. Tapes are so cool and everything, but they are so easy to get messed up. Marina is too captivated by something outside to notice what happened, but I feel all of it. Tears start to swell up deep inside me, but it just morphs into fury. Check it out! That mountain still has snow! Oh shit, no. God damn it! Shut up! Yeah, she was bottling it, man. I saw that shit coming. As if the universe were conspiring against me, a deafening explosion blasts in front of us. Tremors shake the motor the motorhome. We bounce in our seats as I grip the wheel and pound on the brakes, swerving out of traffic. Our hearts almost collide. Gasping for air, Marina turns to me for answers. Damn it! Not now! I tear off my seatbelt and rush outside. Smoke rises from the engine, tearing into my lungs as I open the hood. Marina runs to my side, waving away the smoke. Her jaw drops. Oh my god, what happened? What do you think happened? The engine blew! I punt the bumper. It leaves a small dent. Like my numb foot is made of steel. What? But how? How the hell would I know? She flinches back, but manages to put on a hopeful smile. We have some tools. Maybe we can fix it. Laughing, I lean in and scoff in her face. Oh, you know how to fix the engine, Marina? No, but I thought maybe you could. Do I look like a mechanic to you? Marina wraps herself in the security of her arms and looks to the windmills, their wings casting thick, brief shadows over us. I just thought... <laughs> you thought? The last time you thought, you ended up broken down on the side of the road! Fuck, dude. So maybe it would be better for the both of us if you continued not to think! She can hardly look at me. Her voice lowers to a fragile whisper, crackling as she speaks. I just wanted to help. Unless you can magically pull a phone out of your ass and call a tow truck, then you can't. And even if you could, you would probably just let it get stolen. No response. You want to make yourself useful? Go back into the RV! Marina keeps her eyes to the ground. Without saying another word, she slinks back to her seat. I sigh and space myself out in front of the motorhome, waving my hands back and forth as cars speed by, ignoring my signal. Even I can't follow my own stupid advice. You know, I can't really blame her. Yeah, alright. I understand. I can't really blame Amber for the, you know, state that she's in. When you bottle up your emotions like that, and she has been doing that, like this whole game, like you'll you'll become a bit of a mess. 
And when she did let out those emotions into the tears that she had the previous night, that was good. But then she went right back to bottling them up and, and you know, just trying to push the issue away. And, and yes, I was worried about in the last episode if she was just using uh, Marina because people will try to do whatever they can in order to get away from situations like this. It's hard to explain. I mean, I've been through similar situations, which is why I can I can kind of understand not not an exact word for word type of situation, but you guys get what I mean. So I I definitely understand where all this anger is coming from. It's, it's fucking real, man. It's real. Thanks. Untangling the cord, I set the phone down and sit on the bed, then sigh into my hands. Hotel sheets are surprisingly soft, a hell of a lot softer than the stiff rags I've been sleeping on lately. Downtown Palm Springs, a five-star hotel. We were lucky they had vacancy, let alone checked us in this late. Of course, a nugget of gold can go a long way in the art of persuasion. I would have sprung for a cheap motel, but every place has no vacancy signs lit up. And, well, I guess I just wanted to pamper Marina one last time. Especially after earlier especially before what I'm about to do. The bathroom door creaks open. Marina walks onto the carpet, her hair still damp and stringy. Noticing me, she stares down, avoiding eye contact. I do the same, letting the silence overtake the room until one of us is forced to say something. How was the shower? It was nice. Got hot really fast. The room goes silent again. Neither of us can look at the other, but we're both stuck, trapped until one of us can get past the awkwardness. Marina is the first to look up. Will the motorhome be okay? Yeah. They said the engine overheated. Should be able to fix it. That was my assumption. Now, I'm no mechanic, and I don't know shit about cars or vehicles in general, but that was my assumption. That's good. Maybe it's because it's pretty common, especially where they're driving around, and how old the vehicle seems to be and how used it is. The first words we've said to each other in hours, even after I flagged down a car and got someone to call a tow truck for us, we just sat in unbearable silence the entire ride over. But it was the silence that gave me time to reflect about how wrong I was, how wrong I have been, and what it is I really need to do. I'm sorry about yelling at you earlier. I was angry. Yeah, at myself. I shouldn't have taken that out on you. I was being annoying. I should have stopped talking when you asked me to. No! You've never done anything wrong. It was always me. Always. Don't be so dramatic. She flails her arms over my forehead and falls dead onto my shoulder. Everyone gets mad sometimes. Don't beat yourself up over it. I shake my head and pull away. It's not about getting mad. It's that I didn't live up to my end of the bargain. Again. Amber? I look at the curtains and sigh. We're not missing anything, just an ugly view of the parking lot. <sighs> I just got off the phone. I bought a bus ticket home for you. One way. Uh, huh? The cab should be here 10.30 tomorrow morning to take you to the station. Marina shakes out a stilted laugh. She's not smiling, though. You're, you're just teasing me again, right? I ignore her and continue. You can call your parents with the phone. I don't mind paying the extra charge. You're serious? Bug-eyed, Marina freezes, the truth slowly setting in. What about the festival? The treasure? She snaps back, desperate to find some kind of rope to pull me back in. You can keep it. All of it. I don't care. I'll go to the festival, go home, and get a job. I'll just pay everything off that way. You see, this was another thing I was thinking about. I'll, I, I know that people try to, like, like I was saying just a, a little bit ago, People will do anything in order to avoid a situation they don't want to deal with, especially one such as this, you know, Amber having a huge loss in her life, the loss of a family member. 
this entire game, we've been seeing her just going around and we've been seeing them pretty much just doing anything, not really worrying about cost. Like, whenever cost was actually brought up, and I think it was brought up a couple of times, we never really got an explanation as to, you know, you know, how is she going to deal with it? Or I guess she's just not going to worry about it. And my assumption was, yeah, she's she's just running away. And that is absolutely the truth. She, I guess this is what she's going to do. She's going to go to this festival that she had planned from the very beginning. And then she's going to worry about paying everything off later on. It's very unhealthy. It's a very unhealthy thing to do. And I'm actually somebody who has spent money just to try and, you know, get away from stress or, or real world situations. So I definitely understand. It's not healthy, like I said. Don't do that. Right. How it should have been to begin with. When this trip was about Gramps and not me. I don't care how long it takes. I owe him and Marina that much. Marina stiffle, or sniffles, excuse me. The tears are starting to leak out, but she braces herself, trying to remain strong. Then what about us? What about it? I feel like I just ripped my heart in half. For Marina, it looks like her entire world has been nuked. It makes me want to hug her, to hush her, and tell her over and over that I didn't mean it, that she can always count on me, but I can't. Why? It doesn't matter. Tell me! I said no. Why not? Because you wouldn't understand. Look, you'll be fine. Just keep your head down and don't talk to any- Stop treating me like a fucking child! Hmm. Angry tears streak down her face. Through heavy breathing, she recoils, shocked by her own words. I, I didn't mean- she steps closer and strokes my cheek, turning my face to hers as I try to hide my watery eyes. Amber, please, don't do this. I love you. Please stop, don't make this harder. How can I understand if you don't tell me? That's right. That's right, kids. She barely manages to speak, the tears now in free fall as she chokes out the words. Let me help. I squeeze my hand into a fist, tripping as I back away to the door. I'm sorry. Amber. Her knees buckle and she crumples to the floor, bawling as she squeaks out another plea. Stop. I'm sorry. I throw open the door and sprint down the hallway, leaving Marina sobbing as I wipe away tears of my own. Damn, now this is the reason I've been avoiding the game. Shit, maybe I knew deep down that things are going to get more real. Then that's actually a good thing about this game because, you know, sure, it's a visual novel and, and anime and tropes and, and this and that. And sure, you know, things are a little goofy here and there. But in terms of emotions and, and all that, they, they really hit the fucking nail on that. Like, it, it's actually kind of scary. And maybe that's why I've been avoiding it. Who knows? The crowd moves on. I don't bother raising my head, allowing myself to be dragged along wherever I go. My hand is tucked away, deep within my pocket, playing around with the cassette and its string of tattered ribbon. Yeah, that shit's not ever gonna play again. The hotel is far in the distance now, lit up against the darkening sky. Marina's probably still up there crying. I let go of the tape and force myself to keep walking through the clammy misters attached to shops and bars. It's not my business. It's what's best for her. No. <laughs> no. No, no. But it hurts. Everything hurts. And, there, and there's a reason why. And, and hopefully you learn here. I keep expecting Marina to come skip after me and lean on my shoulder so we can explore the town. Or better yet, chew me out and punch me until I feel like I can justify what I've done. But I know that's not going to happen. She's too sweet for that. She's Marina. And I don't want anything to ever change that, me especially. I can't be trusted with something that precious and not screw it up. Not again. A shrieking laugh shatters my trance. Whipping round, I, found a, or I find a small building squished between a thrift store and a pawn shop. 
I pull off to the side and peek in, wanting nothing more than to forget about everything. It's smaller than the RV, and the entire middle dedicated to four mismatched bars set up in a square, surrounded by cheesy island decor and streamers hanging from the ceiling. Under it all, a legion of girls. Tall girls, girly girls, redheads, blondes, and brunettes, all crammed inside and chatting each other up in a festival of free-flowing drinks. Uh oh. I get to see myself blush in real time thanks to the window. The rest of the bar probably does too. I must look like an idiot. I don't leave though. Sitting at the bar beneath the red and pink party lights is a slim girl with shaggy rainbow dyed hair. She sways on her stool as she laughs with the bartender, the shape of her ass outlined in her tight jeans. I can't buy her a drink. But then again, this is the place for it. Maybe I... Catching a glimpse of me, she turns to the window and gives me a big bright smile. Images of Marina flash through my head. Images from last night at first, her holding me, kissing her neck. Don't don't show things that I don't please. <laughs> okay, good. Alright. Whew. And then the Valley of Fire, finding all the pieces of the treasure, helping her on the side of the road. The good times. But the images that stick out the most are the quiet times, me driving on the highway while Marina sways back and forth to my music. I back away, then take off as fast as I can. Am I that disgusting? Was that all Marina was to me? I slap myself. When, I bar when it barely stings, I do it again, smacking myself so hard that tears beat in my eyes. Blinking them back, I swallow and keep running. Ah, the desert. One by one, the shop vanishes. The shops vanish behind me, excuse me. The sidewalk thins, then disappears. Eventually, it's too dark to even see the ground, and I'm running under unfiltered starlight. When I finally stop, my shoes are heavy with sand. I wilt over and suck in huge, gasping breaths. Forcing myself to look over my shoulder, I realize I'm surrounded by sand dunes and rocky hill ranges. I've left the city far behind me. My footprints prove that. This, what the fuck? The, okay, the cacti are scattered at random. Like sorrowful people rooting over the moonlight, their prickly limbs reaching for the sky. I don't know why she just couldn't have said, oh, the, the, the cacti, all, all this big old cactus. But no, I gotta be specific. You gotta try and trick me. I settle my breathing and listen to the sound of the desert. A gust of wind stirring the dry air, the crackly yelp of a coyote, the whimsical horns and hypnotic guitar strums of faint ska What? Now I really am disgusted. Squinting at the horizon, I catch a glimpse of an unmoving light. It's faint and alone, but it's definitely there. Pressured by some kind of masochism, or masochism, excuse me, harbored deep within me, I follow the light. The closer I get, the more I know I should turn back, but my fears are proven to be right as I approach the sound. A black motorhome, with stripes just as hideous as the music blasting from it. With every screech of a trumpet, my ears bleed a little more. Every time the guitar plays that stupid, unchanging rhythm, I die inside. But the worst part is something I've never even been subjected to before. Singing. If you can call it that. Not from the song, but from a familiar brain-piercing wail masking over it. Oh no. I have a bad feeling about this. It's awful. Like a dying siren trying to reel in one last sailor. Covering my ears doesn't help. I can only wince in agony as it reaches a high note, probably killing any wildlife in the general area. Boy, oh boy, am I happy we don't have to hear it. Someone needs to stop this. I march to the door, wondering why I'm even going to bother. After everything she's pulled, why should I, when I can just go about my life? But then she reaches the chorus. Hey, yeah, that's why. I give the door three solid bangs. The singing stops. Ha! I knew you numbskulls couldn't live without me! Uh-oh. Did something happen in this party? Maria, or Mariah, excuse me, swings the door open. She's flushed, dangling a glass bottle from her hand, only to be silenced to a single sniff upon seeing me. 
You suck at treasure hunting and singing. Go figure. She slams the door in my face. I knock again. It's delayed, but she reopens the door, her head consciously peeking halfway out. You've taken everything from me. What else could you possibly want? Your soul. Give me the treasure and you got a deal. I'll throw in the slackers, too. That's probably not going to happen. She leans out the door, nearly stumbling over as she peers from side to side. Where's your better half? I look down. How do I even answer that? Mariah growls and limps toward her refrigerator. Refrigerator, sorry. God damn. <sighs> I really skipped Come on my shit in. there. May as well, no one is waiting for me anymore, and yelling at Mariah is as good of a distraction as any. I climb in. My nose is instantly assaulted with the smell of rancid beer. And whiskey. And vodka. There might even be traces of a skunk. I decide to breathe through my mouth. The couch and the cot are both empty. No lackeys to feed into Mariah's delusions in sight. Where are the other two? Head in the depths of her fridge, Mariah only snorts. Tess wanted to see some stupid walk of fame, so Joe took her. Palm Springs has a walk of fame? According to the squirt. She leans back out of the fridge. How old are you? 19. Why? Close enough. Drink. Um. Well, you know, if the cops don't see, I guess it's not illegal. With. Oh, shit. With a loose throw that I actually have to die for, she tosses me a bottle. The print is in Spanish, carved into the thick glass just above the label. I try pronouncing it, but it comes out sounding depressingly American. You should be worshipping me. That's the good stuff. I'm ecstatic. I think she's too far gone to notice the flatness in my voice. Even if she did, I doubt she'd care. With something resembling happiness on her face. Ah, excuse me, as she cradles half a dozen or so bottles to the couch. Holy shit. You gonna drink all that? Haven't you had enough? Go die. You stole my equipment and my treasure. I'm not letting you steal my 40 ounces to freedom. I mean, it wasn't a lot of treasure, and, you know, we, we kind of got to it first, and you also kind of sold the parts of Marina's car. So, you know, th there, there's a lot of that. I shrug and flop down beside her. Mariah drunkenly reaches for the remote, misses it twice, then switches off the music and hurls the remote across the room. Ugh, finally, thank you. I hate Ska. Mariah snarls at me like a toothless piranha. It's reggae, you uncultured brat! She slums back down. This guy's okay, too. <sighs> yeah, whatever. Uncultured? You were the one who wanted to blow up Shiprock. It was a suggestion. Ah, suggestion! I don't have nearly enough TNT for that. The fact you even have it is what bothers me. Whatever, at least I know what I listen to is good. I like whatever you're into. Yeah, you don't even know. Oh, I can assure you, what I listen to is better than ska. Reggae! Jazz fusion, new age world music, all better than your circus noise. You actually like that hippie dippy crap? <laughs> what books did you fall out of? The one that hit your mother when she was pregnant with you, apparently. Oh my god, holy shit. <laughs> we both click our tongues. Without looking, she pops my cap with a bottle opener, then hers. Giving a half-assed clink of our bottles, we take a swig. The swampy drink trails down my throat, setting my chest on fire. My experience with alcohol is really limited. Gramps didn't keep a lot of booze around, and when he did, it was always mead or wine. Ah, mead. I gotta give that shit a try. I only snuck some out a few times before. Special dates. Gotta say, you're a lot less bearable without the dits holding you on a leash. Shut up! She barely held the flame to the fuse, but that single word is enough to make something inside me go off. Don't you talk about her that way! She's a kinder, more caring person than you'll ever be! 
Mariah scrunches her nose, like my outburst didn't make any sense to her dumb, drunk face. That's not a very high bar. She's not wrong, but couldn't she have at least tried defending herself? I groan and let my blood simmer down, but not before sp uh, spitting out mo one more shot of venom. Excuse Whatever. me. Whatever. It's not like you're any better. You're a mess without the other two keeping you in check. Nah, you're, you're a mess even with them. Hey! Don't get any ideas. I'm the one keeping them in check. They'd be dead by now if it weren't for me. Oh, I'm sure. Sure, Mariah. I pinch the bridge of my nose and shake my head with a short laugh. Whether or not I choose to accept that Mariah exists in my reality, she's at least something familiar. Comforting probably isn't the right word, but she's someone to talk to. Why are you here anyway? Who even knows? Joel mentioned something about a music orgy thing. Music orgy? You mean the festival? Of course they're going to the same fucking place. Yeah, th that. You know, every everything in this story, like I was saying earlier, has been pretty believable, especially with the with the personalities and the and the emotions and 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 all the real feels. However, the whole treasure hunt idea and how we're always running into these fucking bozos, or I guess I should say this single bozo here on the left, that part eh, is what kind of threw me off course. But the rest of the story has been really great. And, and even with that, you know, it's still, it's still a great story. I wouldn't say that ruined it at all. Huh. And you went along with it? Hmm. I guess that makes sense. You guys are a thing, right? Building up from a bunch of snorts, Mariah bursts out laughing. <laughs> Me and that slacker wouldn't be a thing if the planets collided, wiped out everything, formed a, a mega planet, and we had to repopulate. I like how that didn't make any sense. Why do I get the feeling this exact scenario has been played out in her journal multiple times? Besides, there's more important things to focus on. Or at least... She looks at the drawer again and then glares at me. There were. I hide the temptation to laugh in her face and take another gulp. So nothing, huh? You grow up with someone and don't feel the tiniest thing for them? Eh. She takes another swig, but this time just gives the wall a dry blank stare. If he's still single in ten years, maybe I'll marry him out of pity. Yeah, only out of pity, though. I bet she'd marry the treasure in a heartbeat, though. Probably do more than just marry it. What about you and the dips? Aren't you two going to the music orgy together? Her eyes narrow. I'll kill you if that's what you're using my treasure for, by the way. I don't answer, looking at my now near-empty bottle instead. What? Do you two have a fight? Something like that. I bet it was because of the gold. No honor among thieves, I'll tell ya. No, nothing like that. It's... It's hard to explain. Well, I don't really care, but go ahead and moan if you want. It's not any different than what you usually do. I look at Mariah. She doesn't seem particularly invested, interested in downing more beers than anything. She's a maniac. That has always been, and still is, abundantly clear. She probably would tear apart the entire Southwest if left unattended. Hell, maybe even the entire nation. She's no Joe. No way she could hold up an actual conversation. No way she could accidentally offer some good advice. No way she feels any sympathy. Still, I feel like I can vent to her. Not trust her, not after the RV chases and games of blackjack, but vent. She doesn't care, but maybe that's what makes it so appealing. I stay silent and stare at the ceiling. Mulling over everything that's happened, searching for the right words, words I couldn't even give to Marina. I said that I don't care. Not that I'm willing to wait all night so you can steal my time, too. Just give me a minute. I'm not really used to... this. Yeah. Taking a deep breath, I look past Mariah, unwilling to let her see my shame. The single shred of pride I have left snaps and I let all the weakness come fumbling out. I met Marina a little after my grandpa died. 
Okay, we're gonna have to save the, the, the serious moment here because that seems to be where we're at for next time because we're out of time. So thank you guys for watching and I guess this was episode 18 and it's been yet another month since the last one, but for the next few days, I'm gonna record this shit. We're gonna get this shit done. We are going to finish this. I don't know how because I've been failing to so far, but you, you guys will see as we as we approach the hopeful end of this you know we'll there will be more episodes or at least i fucking hope that i hold on to that statement but if you enjoyed this episode make sure you leave a like subscribe any of that other fancy jazz and i will see you all in the next episode take it easy <laughs>